Hello, I'm Alex Revere, and I'm a developer experience engineer at Mural, and you can usually find me online with the username Fimian, and my blog is at alex.party. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you about CSS tricks, bad ideas, and efficient ways to build them. Uh, first, I'd like to give a shout out to Chris Coyer, who has not filed a DMCA takedown request. I super appreciate that. Uh, so let's talk about me a little bit before we dig into this. Uh, I love making bad ideas really well. Okay, for example, I'm currently working on a web component library that re-implements deprecated HTML tags, such as the font tag, the marquee tag, the blink tag, but we're making them better. We're making them more accessible. The marquee tag, the blink tag, respect prefers reduced motion. The font tag automatically imports Google fonts. Bad idea, good implementation. Now, my sources of inspiration for these bad ideas come from all over the place. Like, my design inspiration comes from GeoCities. Kids, if you don't know what GeoCities is, go look it up on Yahoo. Um, I also get bad ideas from staring at the sun. That's a lie. I don't, I don't go outside. Um, and I also get bad ideas from bad domain suggestions. And that's where today's inspiration comes from. Um, this bad idea comes from a time I was hanging out in the Shop Talk Show da, 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 Discord, and someone mentioned the word CSS tricks. And that made me think it would be really funny if someone had CSSTricks.com, because it sounds a lot like CSSTricks.com, right? Uh, so anyway, a short impulse purchase later, that was me. Now, my next thought is I need content, and I'd figured I'd make a really bad-looking version of CSSTricks.com. Now, let's talk about why this is a bad idea for a second. One, don't steal people's content. Don't. Don't steal people's content. This is That's a bad idea, okay? It's really rude and illegal. Two... Uh, this is kind of a form of typo squatting. I'm, I'm switching out one letter and hoping that people land on this page based on that fact. And that's, that's also just rude. Don't do that. The other reason why this is a bad idea is because I'm going to make bad font choices. Like I do. Anyway, moving on, I explained my concept to Chris and well, I got his blessing. So I was off to the races. Now, my first attempt at this was a single index.html file. It used the CSS Tricks WordPress API, but it's the JSONP version of the API. So uh, you would, the way that JSONP works is that it's like a JSON API, but it's, it's you pass it a function name in the query and it wraps your response in that function as, as a call. So the first parameter of your function will be your response. This allows you to load it as a script tag in the page and kind of allows you to bypass some cores issues, right? If you're, if you're trying to use fetch and get the thing and it may get complicated. So this is a better way of doing it if you're just looking to load some data into a page. I take the articles, I put the title, the, the excerpt from it, and then links back to CSSTricks.com. Um, so I'm not actually stealing, I'm just sort of making a landing page that looks really terrible and it's funny. Um, this works, this worked, this worked really great, but uh, Chris, Chris Coyer of CSSTricks.com um, filed an issue on GitHub. <sighs> And he pointed out that web crawlers like Google prefer things to be server-side rendered to client-side rendered. They, they, they'll work with client-side rendered stuff. Don't get me wrong. Like, it would index it, but they're going to prefer not that. Um, so let's put it all in a Netlify function. 
which is what I did. So now all the examples from here on out have two functions um, that we can just sort of assume that they have. Uh, there's one that is called render articles where we sort of do the exact same thing as the first example, we're gonna get a list of articles and we're gonna turn them into HTML using the title and the excerpt and all that stuff. Um, and then we have a create HTML doc function. Now the create HTML doc function in this case is using a string with the HTML sort of wrapper, but you could also, I've, I've, I think in the actual implementation, I'm pulling in an index.html file. Um, and then we just sort of look for a, you know, a template tag in there and replace it with our rendered articles. So we can assume that all the examples here on out will be using these. Uh, so looking at our implementation, this is our server-side rendered function. Now I've got a library called HTT Promise that I um, very meticulously and spent hours and hours and hours on and then just copied a gist um, from GitHub pragmatism. Uh, and so we are going to export our function handler. So this is how you export a function for Nellify functions. Uh, we're making it async. We're going to call our CSS tricks API. We're going to await the response. And then I'm going to return a response that is status code 200 content type text slash HTML because we're returning HTML. And so we need to tell the browser, hey, render this as HTML. Uh, then we create our HTML doc. There's our function. We're passing it the response from CSS tricks and that's our body. And there we go. Now, uh, the catch in here is in case something goes wrong in the, in the CSS tricks call or who knows what else, maybe I messed up something in my syntax for create HTML doc. Um, it'll return a status code 500 cause something has gone wrong internally and it'll give a error message as well. Boom, done. Downsides of this approach, however, there are some downsides and let's talk about these downsides, all right? Now I am doing this for fun. This is hilarious to me. I love doing things like this. However, if someone with a very large following and happened to have a website that was very large with a lot of traffic and then linked to it, um, I don't know if like if CSS tricks or something linked to CSS tricks, that would be bad because then I would, it would be a lot of traffic. And while Netlify has a very graciously large free tier, I, I could end up paying some money for that. Um, so, you know, we don't want that. The other one is that actually the page generation is kind of slow. If you do it this way, uh, it takes a second a second and a half to get the response back from the function. And that's because we're just, we're waiting on CSS tricks to respond, right? So there's like, and then we're having to like manipulate data. So there's like this whole, there's this whole chain of events that are happening behind the scenes. And like, it takes, it's kind of slow. The, the other problem with the, this approach is that we weren't actually taking advantage of like the latest, greatest thing from Netlify. I did this back in Mar in, in May. And so, uh, on-demand builders were brand new at that point. And let me tell you, they are great. Uh, so let's talk about on-demand builders. On-demand builders are Netlify's implementation of distributed persistent rendering. I think other people have talked about this today. So I'm not going to worry about it too much. But what does this mean? Well, we're going to do uh, the first call is going to build the page. And then once it's built in that function, Netlify caches it. Subsequent calls to that page use the cached version rather than recalling the function. So this eliminates that problem I was talking about of every single call is calling the CSS tricks API and we're waiting for it and it takes forever. No, we did the first call, a little bit slow. Next call, fast. Then the way that this works is that eventually we're gonna need to update the site because CSS tricks keeps publishing things. I can't just make it static all the time. So you set up a way to redeploy the site and that will bust the cache. And there you go. You have an on-demand builder that you can use. I know that you're asking, how do we do it? And I know that you're probably thinking there's a lot of code involved. You have to go and you have to get libraries and you have to 
fire up servers and you have to do all of these things because there's caching and and storage and oh, all of this stuff. Now let's take a look. This is our new example. Looks very familiar. Uh, let me highlight the bits that have changed. We're bringing in another package called Builder from Netlify Functions, and then we wrap our async function that we're returning as the handler in that builder function, and we get a cached function call, and it does exactly what I've explained to you. Now, what I'm not showing here is that I also had to set up a GitHub action in order to bust the cache about every 12 hours, and that invalidates the cache so we get fresh content. And that's how I built CSSTricks.com. Uh, it's a bad idea, executed in an overly complicated way, to demonstrate a point. We could use this builder pattern to create each individual article from CSS Tricks on CSS Tricks, or we could do this with another headless CMS. Uh, you could have thousands of pages and just only generate the ones that you want, but still get that nice CDN static caching. Uh, we could also, if you have users, you could use the non-cached version of the function to go get uh, user-specific information from APIs. You can also just load some stuff and client render it, and that's fine. So, there you go. I hope this helps you navigate the options for some of the ways you can render your data with uh, Jamstack. Feel free to explore my implementation on GitHub, and you can also file bugs. If you file a bug about fonts, uh, I'm going to close it with won't fix. Thank you for listening to my talk. I'm Alex Revere. Have a good day. Sit, Jamstack, sit. Woof, woof. Good boy.